Asante sana. I think we can begin. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, making it to this uh, press, uh, press briefing. For years now, life has been very difficult for millions of Kenyans due to unemployment, low incomes, and the rising cost of essential commodities. The COVID-19 pandemic worsened this situation in two directions. The measures taken to contain the spread of infections basically shut down the economy, closing up opportunities to work and earn a living and disrupted global supply chains, causing shortages that drove the prices of basic goods beyond the reach of many households. In addition, Kenya and the entire Horn of Africa region underwent five successive seasons of failed rains, leading to devastating famine, death of livestock, and withering of crops, further worsening food shortages. The resultant economic hardship followed years of declining agricultural production in our country. This meant that the earnings of people employed in agriculture who make up to 70% of the country's workforce were diminishing as the cost of living rose steeply. Scarcity of essential food items drove the cost of food as a share of household expenditure all the way to 54% on average. <clears throat> For these reasons, the bottom-up economic transformation agenda recognized that Kenya's poor economic performance was primarily due to underperformance of agriculture. Agriculture's contribution to employment, to incomes, foreign exchange, cost of living, and industrialization has two related implications. One, Neglecting to invest in agriculture deprives the economy of a tremendous opportunity to grow steadily, increasing unemployment, poverty, and inequality. Two strategic interventions in agriculture can ignite the national economy and set it on the path to inclusive growth. On my first day in office, I outline to the nation the hard times and difficult choices we faced, as well as the respective costs and benefits of policies at the time and the strategies proposed in our agenda. It was clear that low agricultural productivity was not only raising the cost of living, but also driving poverty among millions whose livelihoods are connected to agriculture. I have said 70% of all employment is from the agricultural sector with its linkages in manufacturing, value addition, and agro-processing. At the same time, the importation of food items and expenditure on subsidies, including duty waivers, were depleting our foreign exchange and exerting severe budgetary pressure without attacking the fundamental productivity problem. We were living dangerously and beyond our means. I therefore propose to retire the prevailing policy of subsidizing consumption in favor of subsidizing production. Instead, we started investing in agriculture, the country's biggest employer, largest contributor to our GDP, and the mainstay of all our rural communities and economies. The strategic objective of this intervention was to facilitate all Kenyan farmers to transform their production from a futile struggle for meager subsistence, which comprises brief moments of food availability, followed by long periods of scarcity, malnutrition, and poverty. Instead, we transform this to surplus production, food security, and sustainable incomes. 
Because arable land in Kenya is limited and our population has increased over the years, the only way to increase agricultural productivity is through the use of high quality inputs, in particular fertilizer, which significantly increases crop yields in the same area of land, use mechanization, and support farmers to be able to produce. In other words, by addressing the cost, quality, and availability of inputs and associated direct production expenses, we were setting out to liberate our agricultural sector from chronic underperformance and transforming it into the primary driver of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda and the foundation of Kenya's prosperity, industrial capacity, and competitive advantage. Upon assuming office, therefore, I announced that the government would prepare farmers for the last planting season that was uh, late last year by making available 300,000 metric tons or 6 million bags subsidized at 3,500 each, down from 7,000 a bag last season. The program was going to be accompanied by a farmer registration exercise and the deployment of an accurate and transparent e-voucher system for managing distribution of the farm inputs. We were also going to collaborate with county governments to facilitate last mile delivery to farm gates. I am very happy that some county governments actually worked with us on this exercise and we were able to open additional stores in different parts of the country. Earlier in the year, I presided over the launch of the first phase of the subsidized fertilizer program and the inaugural phase of the National Farmer Digital Registration Exercise. For the first time in more than a decade, the fertilizer reached farmers in time to prepare for planting, and in that time, we delivered 2 million uh, 50 kilogram bag to farmers last season. Similarly, since the onset of the long rains this year, we have prepared farmers in 41 counties and delivered to them 3 million 536 162 bags of crop specific region-specific fertilizer, and in the process registered more than 5 million farmers and issued 3,628,512 e-vouchers and established a last-mile distribution network. For the first time in our country's history, we are providing farmers with fertilizer whose formulation is customized to feed crops with their specific requirements of elements and address local soil nutrient composition. It is also the first time that fertilizer has been delivered directly to farmers on the basis of land acreage and crop production capacity, thanks to technology. Our last mile logistics were enhanced through effective partnership with county governments, and as a result, counties and communities made warehouses and stores available to the National Cereals and Produce Board to serve farmers efficiently and as close to them as possible. ICT, once again, provide, uh, proved to be a, a game changer for our innovative intervention to serve farmers. After working with local administration to register farmers, and I must congratulate my deputy for spearheading that process, we collaborated with Safaricom to develop and deploy the fertilizer e forger system to administer the fertilizer subsidy transparently, accurately, and efficiently. By cutting out brokers, middlemen, 
and other intermediaries, we have eradicated corruption and inefficiency from the program in order to concentrate maximum benefits on the farmer. The crops uh, targeted by the e voucher subsidized fertilizer program are maize, coffee, sugarcane, potatoes, rice, tea, cotton, edible oils, and tomatoes. The total amount spent so far on the fertilizer subsidy program is a small fraction of the annual cost of consumption subsidies, and yet its impact is nothing short of tremendous. In 2017, Kenya produced 39 million bags of maize. In 2018, production rose to 44 million bags of maize, but later came down to 40 in 2019, and again 40 uh, million bags in 2021. Our target this year and annually going forward is to produce 60 million, 61 million bags annually between this year all the way to 2027. Long rains annually account for 80% of our season production. From the long rain season alone, which um, is, is underway, and we want to thank God that we got rain this year better than uh, the last uh, several years. We estimate a yield of 44 million bags in this season compared to last year's 32 million bags. We estimate that we will get an extra 12 million bags thanks by the grace of God to the rains that we got, thanks to the patriotism of our farmers. If there are patriotic citizens of our country, it is our farmers. Our farmers have come in full force. They have gone beyond their normal call of duty to respond to our intervention and they are doing a phenomenal job as a farming community. As a result of effectively administered strategic interventions, we are definitely on course to meet national demand in full this year. Today, I am proud to announce the commencement of the second phase of our program. On this leg, we shall begin to immediately bring down the price of fertilizer from 3,500 to 2,500 per 50 kilogram bag beginning yesterday. And I'm told that yesterday alone, 34,000 bags of subsidized fertilizer were sold to our farmers, a record in a long time meaning that the farmers know the importance of subsidized fertilizer. And this is for the short rains now that it's going to begin um, next month all the way to December. At this price, we expect significantly higher uptake of fertilizer. Since fertilizer is the game changer of our agricultural productivity, this should translate to higher production in the next planting season. I encourage farmers to embrace better and greater use of fertilizer to increase yields in the coming seasons. The government is also appealing to farmers to redouble the use of fertilizer per acre to increase agricultural production. In the long rain season, most farmers used one bag of fertilizer per acre. Data shows that if you double the fertilizer per acre, you will get more than more yield from between 20 and 25 bags per, per acre. Many farmers who use one bag per, per acre get anywhere between 12 and 15 bags. 
but if they double the use of fertilizer, and I want this, I want every farmer to listen to me because this is what I do in my farm. Yeah? When you double the use of fertilizer, there is a direct correlation to the production that you get as a farmer. So I am asking our farmers, now that we have reduced the cost of fertilizer from 7,000 now to 2,500, they have absolutely no reason why they should not double the fertilizer they are using from one bag to two bags, and we can immediately double our production and we can get rid of the shortages and the high costs of food in our country. For the coming short rains, the government has embarked on the distribution of fertilizer to farmers throughout the country with a view to ultimately delivering 100,000 metric tons or at least 2 million bags of two or 50 kilogram bags at the subsidized price of 2,500. I'm asking farmers in the short rain regions that we are working with the county governments, and I am happy the chair of the Council of Governors is here, so that we can work with them on the last mile <coughs> delivery to make sure that our farmers have access to fertilizer, especially the last mile component, so that we can enhance the productivity of our farmers. I still see whenever I go around the country, that many farmers are not yet using sufficient fertilizer. Many of them are planting without. Some of them are planting with half a bag. Those who are trying are doing with one bag. I am encouraging farmers going forward that let us use at least minimum two as we go to three, because that is how we are going to increase our productivity and that is how we are going to feed our nation, and that is how we are going to bring down the cost of living in Kenya. Further, I'm happy to announce that our partnership with county governments has provided last mile delivery of fertilizer to farmers and will be complemented with the opening of more than 50 distribution centers across the country. We will do more if the need arises. I am asking our county governments to work with us, to work with the National Cereals and Produce Board in opening additional centers where we can uh, make these fertilizers available. And we are going to work on a mechanism where this will be jointly rolled out between the national government and our county governments. And we can agree on how the last mile can be, can be worked out. Um, my suggestion would be the county governments provide the space and the stores. And as a national government, we will work with them in making sure that there is personnel which can be shared between the county and the national government to make sure those stores run efficiently and serve the farmers as best as we all want. As we prepare for a bumper harvest, thanks to a successful collaboration between the Almighty God who has given us rain, the government of Kenya who has delivered uh, fertilizer, and our very hard-working farmers who has done the most. I also take this opportunity to convey more good news to our farmers. We are now implementing a national initiative to acquire 100 dryers, which will be distributed strategically to various NCPB depots nationwide, with the aim of serving maize farmers as well as cereal farmers at subsidized and highly affordable rates. I know, for example, that farmers have been spending um, anywhere between about 60 shillings per 90 kilogram a bag of maize and, and thereabout, we are proposing that this year, government of Kenya is going to meet half the bill for drying. Again, this is our strategy to make sure that we eliminate 
post-harvest losses. As we all know, we have seen farmers trying to dry their produce in all manner of ways, on roadsides, along the roads, in all manner of places. I want to tell our farmers that the government of Kenya is not only going to provide the facilities for them to do the drying, but we are going to meet half the cost of drying so that we minimize on the almost 20, 30 percent losses that we um, that, that normally uh, we lose because of um, management of the post uh, harvest uh, challenges. Um, we are also doing this because um, the weathermen are telling us that there, must, there might be some uh, El Nino rains further down the road, and we want to make sure that the El Nino rains do not disrupt our production. Just as we have maximized farmers' comfort by eliminating middlemen, brokers, conmen and intermediaries in the distribution of inputs through ICT, we are also maximizing farmer returns from their produce by likewise removing brokers, middlemen, and others, as well as other perennial marketing challenges related to cereals and pulses. To this end, we shall implement the Warehouse Receipt System Act of 2019 which has never been implemented, which establishes a structured and well-regulated trading system for agricultural commodities. This system creates an ecosystem with opportunities for the private sector and National Cereals and Produce Board to provide a trading platform that links buyers and sellers and facilitates access to credit by agricultural producers. The warehouse receipt system also supports the reduction of post-harvest losses and cushions farmers against low farm gate prices. Again, the minister has clarity on how he's going to work with the private sector to make sure that we make the capacities within National Cereals and Produce Board and other government entities available for the private sector to work with us to make sure that we eliminate uh, drop in prices that significantly affects farmers, but also we provide storage and other capabilities and a, and a trading mechanism that is fair both to the consumer but also fair to our farmers. We are increasing the budget again as an intervention for the Agricultural Finance Corporation for seasonal crop lending from 2 billion shillings to 10 billion to facilitate affordable credit that will be available to our farmers. The credit will be provided at single digit rates to further reduce our cost of production and enhance the productivity of our farmers. We have so many farmers that every season borrow money to buy inputs. The money that has been available has been between 2 billion and 2.5 billion of, uh, over, over the years, which has not been adequate. This year, we are scaling that up to 10 billion shillings, and I am telling farmers across the country that they can now have access to affordable credit to help them support the country in matters food production and also making sure that we have a thriving agricultural sector. We are also working with the private sector and county governments on a comprehensive mechanization program to increase av available tractors and other farm machinery to further enhance the efficiency and productivity of our farmers. As you are all aware, some of our farmers are still using all manner of uh, practices, including oxen and, and all manner, and their productivity is limited. We have scope. Our mechanization is currently at around 
it is the intention in the next five years to drive that to 75% mechanization in Kenya. The program that we already have in place is the first 10,000 tractors and other machinery. We are at the tail end of discussions between government of Kenya and different suppliers who will be, uh, who we are going to demand that they set up assembly plants in Kenya to support our agricultural uh, machinery delivery and also to support our productivity. We will be giving our farmers news before the end of the year on the comprehensive mechanization plan and I'm happy that many counties uh, are part of this discussion so that they too can support farmers in making sure that we build on our mechanization capabilities. Um, I commend all the governors who have responded positively and robustly to our proposal for partnership in serving our farmers so that they can serve our nation better. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, governors who are here, and I look forward to celebrating many abundant harvest seasons this year with you and your colleagues whom you are representing here. I also thank profoundly our farmers. As I said, they are the most patriotic Kenyans that I know, that even when things are difficult, they still go to our farms to produce food for the nation. Through their hard work and the interventions we have made, through the fertilizer subsidy program and other programs, our farmers have expanded just this year an extra 200,000 acres compared to last year. Our ultimate target is to double agricultural productivity in Kenya by 2027. Your government stands with you and will support you as you pursue our shared aspiration for prosperity and national agricultural competitiveness. I say this to our farmers, and I speak to them with a lot of passion, not because I'm one of them, but because they are doing a phenomenal job. Thank you very much. I will take a few questions. Um, my name is Chemutai going from Citizen TV, and um, I have one question. Uh, there's been concern by sugarcane farmers uh, in parts of uh, Western and Nyanza. Some factories have closed shop, and Kenyans are actually concerned about the price of sugar because um, when you look at the period when you took over power, sugar was about 300 shillings, and now 2 kgs is retailing for about 510. So the concern is what is pushing the price of sugar up and what interventions the Ministry of Agriculture and the administration is using uh, to cushion the farmers. Thank you. Thank you very much. I agree with you that there is concern around uh, sugar. Some of the, uh, we've had confusion and chaos actually in the whole sugar subsector. And we are streamlining uh, uh, that sector because the whole sugarcane sector has been riddled with all manner of confusion and uh, um, poaching of sugarcane from one corner to another. The others, uh, everybody refusing to work in accordance with the law. In fact, the reason why many companies have, sh have closed a shop uh, temporarily is because there is no cane to harvest. And uh, uh, they were even harvesting cane that is not mature. We have had serious consultations. The minister, AFA, has been on top of that game. Uh, it is true the prices have gone up. We have been reluctant to work against farmers by opening importation. Importation has always been a problem in Kenya. 
that sometimes importation has been used to destroy the whole sugar industry. We have been careful, we have been uh, methodical, but finally we have uh, given licenses for the importation of uh, sugar into the country. Initially, we started with Comesa sugar that was not, finally it was not available. We have, as required by uh, the signatories that we, we, are, we are signatories to, we cannot open sugar to other markets before we start with the Comesa sugar. Now that we have ascertained that there isn't sufficient supply in the Comesa uh, area, we've now opened globally, and I want to announce that I think in the next one or two weeks, uh, at least by mid of this month, we will see a different uh, situation pertaining because that's the time we expect stocks of, um, of sugar to come into the country. But additionally, I did undertake during the campaign to sort out the whole sugar subsector. We've been in consultations with the um, stakeholders uh, the minister here has had a meeting with all the governors from the sugar-growing areas. He has had a meeting with all the members of parliament. I have personally had maybe six, seven meetings with my economic team, with the various stakeholders. And finally, we now have a roadmap that will be discussed in cabinet next week. And uh, I want to promise the country that we now have a comprehensive plan to sort out our sugar subsector and make sure that that area is properly aligned to serve the interest of farmers first and to serve the interest of the country, consumers, and everybody else. Thank you very much. My name is Dev Kirui from KTN News, and my question is regarding the subsidized fertilizer is a welcome move in terms of increasing production. However, there is another key component, which is the cost of fuel. And uh, what is the government doing about that since the cost of fuel, specifically diesel, has been rising steadily? Thank you very much. As you are aware, our intervention in that space is what I said earlier, that um, we cannot go into subsidizing consumption. And the interventions we are making in making sure that we have a farmer community that is motivated to produce food. And you can see from the numbers that by reducing the cost of uh, fertilizer, we have an additional 200,000 acres of uh, farmland that has been brought into production. We have the uptake that is phenomenal. I just told you that in one day, we sold 34,000 bags of fertilizer the highest this season. It tells you that the interventions we are making, the farmers are responding. We cannot obviously intervene in everything, but we intervene in the areas that we believe will give us the highest return on our intervention. And an intervention that is targeted. There is no way, for example, you can target fuel for agricultural production. It becomes a very difficult exercise to target. We can easily target fertilizer because you cannot use fertilizer to do anything else. It's only to plant. You know, that's, that's why it's easy. And you know, the reason why we have taken this approach is that we want policy interventions that cannot be abused, that cannot be subjected to corruption, that cannot be diverted. And that is why we are intervening in the manner in which we are. Your Excellency, my name is Mwangi Maina from Inoro TV. My first question is, you have rightfully said that one of the challenges we face as a country is the inadequacy of land and population. But in some of the most productive counties, we have seen a craze of land subdivision. What is your government doing to ensure that we do not lose all the arable land that we are having? Secondly, concerning the coffee sector, Right why now, don't you, why don't I answer you that one? Quickly. Okay, it's okay, sir. Affordable housing. <laughs> I mean, the reason why we have affordable housing 
And you've asked a very important question. The reason why we are working on affordable housing is because we want to reverse the land fragmentation for settlement that is going on in Kenya, denying us the opportunity to use that land for agricultural and food production. Instead, it is being subdivided for settlement. Affordable housing will help us reverse that trend, consolidate land for agricultural productivity, and use the land we have for settlement by making sure that affordable housing consolidates land that is settled for housing so that we can free up land that currently is being abused by, through subdivision and we can then make that land af af available for agricultural productivity. Finally, you can Mr. go to President, coffee. On coffee sector, currently we are not having coffee that is being sold in the Nairobi Coffee Exchange, and you know the government is having plans to revitalize the coffee sector. What is happening currently? We've had challenges in the coffee sector. We also, uh, I, I made a commitment during the campaign that we are going to sort out this sector. We have people in that space who are chronic. And because we have to sort out that space, we've had to make some difficult decisions. Including this morning, we were having a conversation about coffee. What I want to promise the coffee farmers is that we are going to sort out this area. Imagine last year, we even made fertilizer available at 3,500 for coffee farmers. But the cartel in the coffee sector could not even allow the farmers to pick the coffee of 3,500. They were still selling fertilizer of 5,000 to farmers by force. Can you imagine that? So we are on top of it. I want to promise the coffee farmers, I know coffee farmers are not making money the way they should. Current going prices of beans is maybe 50, 60, 70 shillings. We made a commitment that we are going to have a floor price of between 100 and 120 uh, shillings per kilo, going upwards, progressing towards 150. That is where we are going to take this. There has been a challenge of uh, the auction. We have agreed tentatively that there will be an auction uh, next week to make sure that uh, the whole process does not stall. But finally, we will sort out matters around the sale of coffee. Farmers are getting a raw deal in the whole of that exercise. And uh, two or three people have taken that whole sector hostage. And uh, I want to promise our farmers that the government of Kenya is going to sort it out. Um, Your Excellency, my name is Grace Korea Kanja from TV47. Two questions, I'll go with the first. What plans does the government have to harvest water now that, like you said, we have an early warning from the weathermen? And your second question? My second question, Your Excellency, is um, ahead of the anticipated talks between uh, Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimir. Please, let's not go there. Let's not go there. So uh, <laughs> let's stick with the first question. Um, we, are, we have a whole program. As you have seen, we have uh, already advertised the first 33 mega dams. The analysis is going on at the moment of the various uh, tender documents as part of our big plan on water harvesting. Our stretch is to do 100 mega dams, to do close to 1,000 micro dams, and close to 3,800 water pans around the country. That is a program, a program that uh, Alice Wahome, CS Alice Wahome and her team are working on. They will be sending a brief to cabinet in the next one week, and we are well on course on harvesting water because it is a major component that is going to drive 
our farming through irrigation, is going to drive our health through making sure that there is uh, clean water for drinking, is also going to drive our, life, our livestock industry by making sure that we have water for livestock. So it's a very important sector. It is one of our big focus, our big uh, tickets, and we are working on it. Your Thank you very much, my, my, my name is good Gita, people. My name is Gitao Wanjiko, and my question touches on Pelis or Shamba system. I would like to know how does it contribute to the food security? And uh, on the other hand, we have felt, and some people feel that uh, the Shamba system uh, contribute into environmental de degradation, and uh, your government is so serious in uh, terms of uh, conserving the environment. How are you going to intermarry the, the two so that uh, maybe we can exploit the Pele system and uh, as well as we contribute or we conserve the environment? Our focus at the moment is on 15, growing 15 billion trees in Kenya. We have a comprehensive plan on how that is going to achieve, uh, on how that is going to be achieved. And we will be making a, a, a statement, a comprehensive statement on all the challenges we are having and what needs to be done to make sure that uh, we, we, we respond appropriately in that space. I know there has been concern, for example, on the lifting of the moratorium on uh, tree harvesting. I want for avoidance of doubt that that will not be an occasion to reverse our tree planting exercise. What we are doing, we are going to make sure that that exercise does not lead to what we have seen in the past. And it is the reason why this year we have hired an extra 1,500 forest officers, including wardens, to make sure that we take full charge of the exercise around our forests and to make sure that if we are harvesting uh, trees because they are mature and they are commercial plantations, it is just that, coordinated properly because there is value in us using some of the resources, especially in the commercial uh, plantations, to drive our 15 billion tree growing plan. The resources that we need in that space is going to be plowed back. In fact, there is no single coin that is going to come from commercial forestry and the harvest of commercial trees that's going to go outside, making sure that we drive our plan on 15 billion trees. But again, we are going to issue a comprehensive statement in that direction. Have a good afternoon, good people. Asante Nisana, God bless you, and please pray for our farmers. They are doing a wonderful job. Asante.